Hey Bewitchlings, Tiffany here on Bewitching Bemused. This is going to be kind of a more uh, casual video and I will be talking about my witchy wedding. Now this is just going to be part one. Uh, I'm going to cover kind of the preparation. Part two will come out after the wedding. Actually, by the time this video is posted, it will be after the wedding. I am currently filming this exactly one week before minus a few hours before the wedding is to take place. So I will be talking about a lot of my preparations. Part two, I will be covering uh, the actual wedding. Um, don't worry. I know some of you were concerned that you were like, focus on your special day. Don't be worried about filming stuff. I probably won't, to be honest with you. I'll probably just mostly use pictures and kind of collect a, a few videos that we didn't hire a videographer, but I might collect a few videos that, you know, guests take and use some of those. I might get a couple of selfie videos while I'm, you know, getting ready. That's probably about it. I'll mostly just be talking about it after the fact. And that might take a few weeks. I know we're leaving for our honeymoon just a few days after the wedding and that's going to be a week long. So after that, I'm going to be massively catching up on work. Um, so also just to let you guys know, I will be probably off the channel, not responding to comments, not responding to emails and not really posting anything for the next few weeks because whew, it has been a busy time and I have not had a chance. I was really hoping to get a bunch of videos made in advance to release while I was away and release during the time I'm playing catch up at my regular job. But that just didn't happen. Things got really, really overwhelming, which maybe I should have seen it coming. But in my defense, I've literally never planned a wedding before. I've never been married before. So, eh. oh, and I'm probably also going to release a video later about our hand fasting. I might, I'm kind of debating on that one. There's lots of different ways to do hand fastings. We're uh, doing kind of a gen, I don't want to say generic, but we're kind of really simplifying it because I really, really wanted to do a hand fasting, but, uh, we have certain people in attendance who would not really be cool with certain aspects of a traditional hand fasting. Um, and I wanted to keep it pretty quick while also having some of those traditional secular, wedding ceremony aspect. So I, I'll go into all of that in the video, but I'm kind of debating whether I just want to cover our hand fasting or if I want to teach you guys some more about hand fasting. I can at the very least recommend a really great book. I can't remember the name of it right now. It's, it's definitely got the word hand fasting in the title, but there's more to it than that. And I can't think of the authors. Okay. You know what? That's a video for another time. The main thing that I've been doing, which I have been doing for the past year and several months is hand making everything. Now, I don't want to shame anybody who cannot hand make everything, whether because they just don't have the time or because maybe they're just not a really crafty person. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not trying to shame anybody for, you know, buying everything or paying somebody else to make stuff for them. Nothing wrong with that. But um, I knew that was something that I really wanted to do, not only because I am a crafty person, I love making stuff, but I also think there's really something to be said for the magical component that is imbued into things when you s devote hours and hours and hours of your time and energy into hand making something with your with your own hands. So with the exception of a couple of decor pieces that a friend of mine actually made for my bridal shower and I was like, yo, I'm gonna take those home with me because I'm gonna also use them at the wedding. Those are amazing. Uh, with the exception of a few of those pieces, I handmade everything. I made the centerpieces. I designed our save the dates. I did not design our invitations though. I made my bouquet. I made the bridesmaids um, and the bridesmaids and sorry, the maid of honor, the bridesmaid and the groomsmaid bouquets. I made all of the boutonnieres, a flower crown for myself, which I'm especially excited to share. It is, I can't believe how well it turned out. So almost all of the decor I made except for just a couple of things. And this was a really long process. Uh, even the arch decor I made myself, I went out and I either purchased because let's be real, I couldn't just harvest everything that wasn't realistic. So I either purchased, harvested, or um, uh, 
collected, I'll get to that in a second, all of the florals for the ceremony. The great thing is our, our theme was till death and then some, which it's a great theme, in my opinion. Uh, so all of our florals was were dried, which saved us a ton of money, and it gave me a lot to work with over the span of the last year. So I wasn't having to work with fresh flowers for everything, because of course that has to be done last minute, so they don't have time to wilt or start going, you know, dying. So already working with dead flowers really helped out. One of the things that I also did for that was I went on Facebook um, to a local uh, kind of exchange group and I put out a message and just said, hey, I'm using all dried florals for my wedding. So if anybody has, you know, uh, flowers in their backyard or, um, you know, bouquets that they've received that are starting to wilt, they haven't fully gone bad yet and I can kind of catch them now and, and hang them and dry them, please let me know. I'll come by and pick them up. And so Mikey and I spent a full Saturday, just, you know, several hours just driving around uh, our area, our town, and then a couple towns over, just swinging by all these people's houses. And people were so, so generous and so helpful. And I collected so much of what I needed. And it, it, like I said, it saved us a ton of money. Oh, the other thing we handmade was we did make our own vows. So yeah. I'll probably go more into that in the next witchy wedding vlog if I might share them. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So I do want to go into, as far as the planning goes, the um, the correspondences of the florals that we used, because I would say that and the colors were the heaviest in correspondences. So the main one, of course, was roses. That's probably a given. Um, and the correspondences love affection and blessings. Another one was baby's breath. So I would use that for communication, fertility and fulfillment. Now the fulfillment aspect, that's sort of a personal correspondence with that one. Um, you're probably not going to find that in any correspondence book. Um, that is because the reason I find that they are, correspond with fulfillment and in terms of a wedding, it's fulfillment with our relationship together, getting, finding fulfillment in our lives together. Um, when you look at a bouquet with, um, baby's breath in it, you know, baby's breath is beautiful on its own and it's added as a filler. Now I don't mean a filler like, you know, you're writing an essay in high school and your teacher says it has to be this many words. So you add little fluff words in there to kind of beef it up a bit. It's not like that because baby's breath on its own is still beautiful and it still has its own meaning and aesthetic to it. Right? So on its own, it, it stands up all on its own, but when you add it to a bouquet, it just sort of adds something extra and it adds more depth to it. And so that's why personally, I find that baby's breath, um, corresponds with fulfillment. Then I also used a lot of carnations for communication, friendship, and love. I think friendship is a type of love that gets left out of wedding ceremonies a lot, and it's not talked about enough. And I mean, part of the reason that I am going to marry, or at the time you guys are watching this, I have married, um, my fiance at that time, husband, is because he's my best friend. He's my best friend, but I also feel both a friendship love for him and a romantic love for him. You know, it's not just based on sexual attraction or lust or, or just romantic love. He's my friend. He's my best friend. And I think that that's something that isn't honored enough in weddings in general. And so I definitely wanted to include that friendship correspondence too, because our, our friendship is part of what keeps us so strong together. Eucalyptus was also heavily used and that is for emotional healing. Um, that's sort of separate in a way from all the love and the la di da stuff. Um, because in our lives together, we found that we have assisted helping each other heal from past trauma emotionally. And I think that that's a big part of our, you know, is our support for one another is a big part of our, the foundation of our relationship is how we build each other up and how we help each other heal. And so I wanted to represent and honor that there as well as encourage that to keep going. Eucalyptus is also for calming. And so, you know, keeping peace in our relationship, staying calm, even when things are tough or even when we're arguing, because again, I think it's, you know, all relationships have difficult moments 
and to just like pretend that that doesn't exist because, oh, it's our wedding day. It's the happiest day of our lives. Well, it can be the happiest day of your life and also be realistic. So I wanted that calming element. Um, eucalyptus is also really good for kind of revitalizing energy and bringing a new general positive energy into a space or into an event. And so, you know, I kind of view this as being a new step in our lives together. And so let's kind of take the energy of our relationship and revitalize it into this new, new stage, new step. Finally, I used a lot of dried autumn leaves. Now, um, this, <laughs> this was for a few reasons. I, a, a lot of our theme and decor was very fall inspired, very autumn inspired. And so I wanted those fall autumn correspondences, um, the aesthetic of it too, of course. Let's be real, a lot of these flowers, I'm leaving that out. It's not just magical correspondences, it's also the aesthetic. I mean, yeah, it's a wedding theme, of course. But anyway, uh, those fall autumn correspondences, vibes, aesthetic, as well as the correspondences of um, Mabon and Sawin as well. So I wanted that that warmth of autumn. You know, I wanted that spice, that like cinnamony, sweet kind of spice zest added to it. I wanted to acknowledge that this is the death of one stage of our lives individually and together and the rebirth of a new era for us together. So there's that. It's also, you know, her home and hearth. It's family. It's balance and stability. Finally, I used a lot of oak leaves, oak tree leaves uh, for the fall leaves. And so oak in and of itself has a lot of really great correspondences that I wanted to include, including abundance. So abundance in our lives together, fertility, stability and strength and blessings. When it came to picking the color choices, I knew I mean, since I was a kid, I knew that I wanted a lot of black. Um, I knew that I probably wanted to wear a black dress, which I am. Black is also a great color that corresponds with commitment and strength. And yes, it goes into those vibes of, I wanted to have an autumn wedding. I wanted to have a, a wedding close to Halloween. I wouldn't say I wanted a Halloween themed wedding. Um, it is sort of Sawin themed, I would say. It's more Sawin themed than Halloween themed. And I wanted to really capture the elegance of it. And so in the till death and then some theme, the Sawin theme, I just wanted to focus on um, kind of that darkness of it because I mean, that's just who I am. So black was always going to be a predominant color, but picking the, you know, other two, which I went with burgundy and gold, um, those took some, a lot of, those took a lot of uh, kind of brainstorming sessions to figure out. I looked at various things, um, not only like the fall palette, but also, you know, what I think would be the most complimentary the, to the theme, um, what I think would be, you know, relatively easy to access in terms of decor. So florals, it's very easy to, you know, red roses, you dry them, they're burgundy, um, things like that. And also just looking at I can't remember if I already said this, the correspondences of them. And so ultimately I landed on burgundy and gold, gold for wealth. And yeah, sure. Part of that's financial. Like, of course we want to be wealthy, but also it's the wealth of our marriage together and our, our union together, the wealth of our love for one another. And gold also represents happiness and friendship. Again, touching on that friendship aspect of our relationship. Whereas the burgundy is more for the romantic love as well as for passion. You never want to lose your passion. Even when you're really old, you don't want to lose your passion and your kind of both, you know, sexual, but also that zest for life that you have for one another, that curiosity about one another, saving that passion of like, I'm excited to spend time with you. Um, and of course, like I said, part of it is the sexual passion, but that I'm, I'm learning new things about you every day or, or you never stop surprising me kind of passion. So that, and then romantic love. I mean, I feel like romantic love is a given in a lot of these correspondences. So yes, that's there too. I think that covers most of the correspondences that I, um, primarily included 
in the wedding was florals and colors. I did toy with the idea of including like crystals and different things like that, but you know, it just, it just became hard to include all of that. And both, you know, you start to kind of cherry pick between what's theme and what works as a correspondence. And I didn't like the idea of being like, well, this fits the theme. Now let me try to figure out a correspondence for it. I just wanted to work with things that easily fit both that I was just like, yeah, I mean, roses are a given, right? Roses are great for weddings. They symbolize love. Um, they symbolize blessings and also they fit in with this kind of elegant goth motif that I'm going for. Oh, the other thing I forgot was pumpkins. I have a lot of pumpkins involved and pumpkins are great for abundance. Abundance is such a great theme for a wedding because Again, it stands for so many things. It could mean abundance as in fertility children. It's sort of a non-specific one. It could be abundance in health, our health together, the health of our relationship, abundance in our happiness together. You know, we go from two separate entities into one, you know, combined union and that union is abundant. It's flourishing with love, with friendship, with support for one another. Um, it also provides us with an abundance. And again, going back to the reference to the baby's breath, that fulfillment, an abundance of fulfillment in life in all regards, because this is the person that it's not just about my love life anymore. And it hasn't, to be real, it hasn't been since the early stages of our dating, that it's not just about the abundance of love lives or our sex lives, but also about because we are each other's other half, you know, we are each other's partner in life, not just in the relationship, not just in sex, not just in love and romance. It's about we live together. We are fully ingrained in one another's lives. So things that happen to me affect him and things that happen to him affect me. And it's, so it's really just this whole accumulative, you know, our lives are shared. And so we want those shared lives to be abundant uh, with good things, full of good things. Outside of wedding planning, in actual preparation, I did a few different rituals. The first one I did was a cleansing bath. Now, I typically actually do this for the Witch's New Year anyway. It's a really great time to perform a self-cleansing because uh, you're starting a new year, right? So you want to begin with a new slate and just kind of slough off all the crap of the last year and start fresh. And it also works for the wedding as well, because again, we're starting a new stage. And so let's slough off all the muck of the past and begin this new step in our lives together fresh. Um, now I did have to do this um, a little bit earlier than I wanted to. I did this, so right, today's Thursday, <laughs> the wedding is a week from now, and I did this on Monday, I think. It is a little sooner than I would have liked, um, a little far from the wedding and Samhain, which is New Year, but I honestly just was not sure if I was going to have the time to create the um, ritual bath infusion, let it steep, and then soak in the bath for a really long time. Now, after I did that and I got fully fresh and clean, I also did a grounding bath. Huh. I used, um, it was from the witch's moon. Oh my goodness. I can't remember the, it was a witch's box. It was like a subscription box. I received one as a gift at my bridal shower. And so I found one that it came with a ritual, uh, bath mix, um, that I saved for this purpose because particularly last week, I had a lot going on with work. I had a lot going on with the wedding. And I also had a couple of side gigs going that um, I actually announced one of them. I posted, posted a picture of on my Instagram of myself with Andre Nicotina. So uh, this is not the time or place to talk about that event, but it was a major event and opportunity. And um, I just, I was very stressed out. I was very, very stressed out last week. Um, like, I was also worried about certain vendors and I'm not going to name who, cause I don't want to make them look bad on here, but, um, in case anybody local who might use them might see this, um, especially cause everything did come together in the end. Everything's going running smoothly and going great. My next vlog, I might 
be that might be a different sentiment we'll see but hopefully everything goes according to plan not that anything ever does but 100 anyway but you know i'll update you in the next vlog after the wedding um but last week i was a nervous wreck i was i was like trembling all the time and i had my mind was constantly racing with like okay add this to the to the to-do list and add that to the to-do list and it was not just wedding stuff it was also like i said that that side gig that i did i performed at herps theater in san francisco it was also work work got really busy which was great um but it's also on top of my regular work which was busy i'm also trying to do a bunch of extra work so that way when i come back after taking two weeks off i'm not just completely you know trapped under an avalanche <laughs> of work to do so it was just it's so much. There was so much going on. I was like trembling. I was forgetting to eat. I was getting insomnia. So I just needed to ground myself. I needed to get myself connected to the earth and to the elements to, to just bring me back to my body essentially and make me at peace in my body again, where I could like, okay, yes, there's a lot on your mind that you could handle this. And it was causing these crazy physiological effects that I did not expect. For instance, <laughs> During my my final uh, meeting with the venue where I turned in the final headcount for the RSVPs and everything, and it went great. It was going according to plan, but I can't remember exactly what the wedding coordinator said to me, but something she said just got me thinking and it made like five new things that I was like, that's right, I need to put that on the to-do list, it just ran through my head and I... I started gagging. Like I actually started gagging. Not that I was actually going to vomit, but it just like triggered a, the stress just triggered a reflex in me that I did not expect. <laughs> so that's the thing that happened. So yes, I needed that grounding bath. Like I needed the cleansing and I needed the grounding and they both helped so much. Speaking again of the cleansing bath, I probably will. The night before the wedding, I'm going to be staying in a hotel. It does have a bathtub. I made sure of that. And I will just bring some salts with me and I will just do a simple, quick, um, or I'll, I'll lounge and soak in the bath. It won't be quick, but at least a simple kind of last minute touches uh, cleansing bath for myself as well. The other thing that I did was a fertility candle spell. So as soon as we are married, we are going to immediately start trying to conceive. So this is something that I have been plotting for a while. I uh, did some candle work for it. It's actually still burning. <laughs> it's right there, um, which was fertility. I used the correspondences. It was very simple. I mostly just carved into the candle and anointed it. And I've been lighting it on and off over the course of several days and charged it up, all that good stuff, of course. I But I did for fertility. I'm also uh, working with Hecate for protection. Um, so during pregnancy and also during childbirth and protecting the eventual unborn child or children that will hopefully result from this. Um, so protection as well. Health was the other aspect of it. So that's part of, that kind of folds also into the protection. So making sure that I am safe and healthy, making sure that, um, you know, the hopeful children will be safe and healthy, but also, you know, obviously in trying to conceive, you need to be in a, a healthy state in order to be able to conceive, especially I'm 34. So I'm getting close to what they refer to as a geriatric pregnancy, which I not a big fan of that term. I'm 34, <laughs> but I understand at a certain age, you know, everything kind of starts declining in regards to conception. So just making sure that I am in the best health and ready to conceive my eggs are healthy and ready to go. Um, same with health for Mikey, um, because obviously he's going to, he's going to play a little bit of a role in this whole pregnancy thing, right? So um, that's a big part of it. The final one was a uh, peace and tranquility. So a peaceful, as much as possible and tranquil uh, pregnancy, as well as labor. And now to be fair, a lot of this stuff I will cover again in an additional ritual once I actually am pregnant. But these are seeds that I wanted to start sowing. And like I said, a lot of this has been kind of in the works for over a year um, that I've just been kind of pre-planning and meditating on and thinking what's the best way to go about this. Um, the other part of peace and tranquility is, you know, if you're ever having 
if you have trouble trying to conceive, and I know this because I've had friends who have had trouble trying to conceive, and because when I used to work as a personal trainer, I got a few different women who came in trying to get into better shape because their doctors told them like getting into better shape will help you and you know being as healthy and fit as possible will help you conceive that also they always said that the number one thing that their doctors always recommended was you just need to like calm down just don't be anxious don't stress yourself out which is like great easier said than done yeah you can tell me that all day it doesn't mean it's gonna happen just because you told me to it doesn't work like a prescription drug okay um but i know that just staying calm and relaxed about the whole thing, about the whole process of trying to conceive instead of every month, you know, getting stressed out about it, worrying about it, anxious about it, you know, looking at the test and going like, why am I, you know, getting frustrated. That's just going to make your chances of conceiving even lower. It's going to make it even harder. So a part of it is also peace and tranquility in the conception process. Um, the attempt to conceive process, I should say. So that's all of that. I also, created and am charging beside the candle a, um, a, a charm bag, much of the same stuff. I also added in some, uh, what did I, what all did I put in there? Honestly, I'm so sorry, but I cannot recall everything that's in there right now. Um, and the book where it's written down is actually downstairs. So I'll probably include more later because you know, once I do conceive, once all of this comes to fruition, I'll probably do a full video on every step that I took in trying to conceive. But that is something that's charging next to the candle. And I am going to be keeping that with me until I am pregnant, basically. So maybe not all the time, but I'm definitely going to have it on our wedding night. I'm definitely going to have it for the entirety of our honeymoon. And um, yeah, so that's just going to be constantly on hand and being charged and renewed and worked with and hoped for, but peacefully, you know, just really chill about it is what, is what I'm going for. So that for me was a very important thing to get done before the wedding, uh, to kind of get that ball rolling. I understand that, you know, it's probably not going to happen on the first shot, probably not going to happen on the second shot. You know, we'll see what happens, but hopefully it'll happen in the first year of trying and uh, we'll go from there. So like I said, I just wanted to have that prepped and ready to go from the moment we first try um, and just get that energy flowing, get those intentions out into the universe and start the process, start working with Hecate specifically in this regard. So, you know, plant the seeds, plant the seeds. Um, the other thing that I am going to do again, Solon for me, at the time I'm filming this still hasn't happened yet. Um, but I am going to be doing my typical witches new year, um, yearly intention pumpkin. And so a lot of that is going to have to do with, um, having a great wedding. Honestly, like I, I want to have a great wedding. I know that's just one event in the grand scheme of the year. That's just one event, but it is a pretty fucking big one. I mean, it's the, you know, hopefully the only one I'm going to have for my whole life. So it's a pretty big deal. Um, there was also the fertility aspects and just a couple other personal things that I want to bring about this year. But I did, you know, some of the themes involved were the wedding and trying to conceive. I think the final thing that I had intended to do, I have not done my nails for the wedding yet. That's why there's a ton of growth down here. I haven't done them yet. I'm just holding off because I want them to last through the wedding and through the whole honeymoon. So um, I'm trying to wait until this weekend to do it because it, the gel nail polish usually lasts about two weeks, um, sometimes a little bit longer, but again, I don't wanna take any chances. I want them to last the whole time. Anyway, I'm gonna do burgundy nail polish, but before I apply it, I'm going to be applying a coat of new moon water and then allowing that to dry before I actually begin the rest of the manicuring process. I'm gonna put that coat of new moon water down first because I want to, um, I mean, new moon, it's about new beginnings, right? So, I mean, it's kind of a given. I've already talked about all these correspondences I've kind of labored on about them. So I'm gonna um, leave it at that, it's new beginnings. Now, there will probably be, those are all the things that I, I have either already done or I have planned to do um, prior to the wedding to prepare most likely I'm going to think of a couple of other things and then incorporate them because I just know that that's how my mind works at the last minute. I'll be like, Oh wait, 
I should do this kind of ritual and I'll throw it together and I'll make it happen. Um, if I do so, I will include that in the next wedding vlog, but mostly the next wedding vlog is going to be about the actual wedding. Um, and the hand, I'll touch on the hand fasting, but I think of, again, I think I'm going to dedicate an entire video to that. So we'll see. Anyway, um, I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in. That's really all I have for you tonight. Um, I'm very, very excited. So this is the last video that will come out for probably about the next three weeks. Uh, th three to four, please be patient with me. It's going to be kind of a crazy time. But I will come back with something exciting. I don't know what yet. Honestly, I've got way too much on my brain to brainstorm that now. So we'll see what happens when it happens. Anyway, I love you all so much again. As always, stay magical. I hope you had a wonderful Samhain. Um, I'm sure I did. I don't know. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to close this out. I love you all. I'll see you all soon.